The Netherlands is famous for its cheese and its ongoing efforts to stay dry despite being below sea level. These two things come together in Adam cheese, because demand for more land to make cheese ended up changing the countryside around the town of Adam forever. Hey there cheese historians, I'm Julia and this is Cheese History, a channel where we talk about the history of cheese and all of its weird and wonderfulness. Adam cheese is traditionally made in Nord Holland, which is a province in what we call today the Netherlands. The cheese, Adam, gets its name from the town of Adam, which was a coastal port where Adam cheese was brought to market and shipped from since at least the 15th century, but probably much earlier. But Nord Holland hasn't always looked like it does today. Where today there are green fields and dairy farms, there used to be swamps and lakes. The Dutch are pretty well known for their ability to take an area of water or swamp and turn it into dry land. They've been doing this for centuries, partially because much of their land is below sea level, so they have to find ways to keep the water out, otherwise they're going to do a lot of swimming. Many of the changes to the landscape can be connected to the growth of dairy farming for cheese making. So let's look a little closer at how Adam cheese impacted the countryside of Nord Holland. Or more accurately, the whole province of Holland, because Nord and South Holland were one province until the mid 19th century. And as many of the changes I'm going to be talking about happened before that, I'm going to talk about Holland most of the time rather than Nord Holland because that's what it was called. With that out of the way, we can turn to what the countryside of Holland used to be like. In order to understand how the landscape changed, we need to know something about what the landscape around Adam was like before cheesemaking became big business. For many millennia, much of Holland was effectively one big swampy area, with humans only able to settle along rivers, on the coasts, and on any patches of raised land. Because much of the area is below sea level, the inhabitants had to take measures to stop the sea flooding their land. Sometime around 500 BC, they began building low dikes to protect their farms and often built their houses on raised mounds. And the inhabitants of these areas were doing pretty well for themselves when the Romans arrived on the scene. Like the Dutch today, the Romans also weren't the type to let things like a swamp get in their way. So they took things to the next level and started digging canals to drain the excess water away so they could cultivate more land. So the landscape around Holland began to change, but it still had to contend with the forces of nature. Over time, the sea slowly eroded away the natural barriers of Holland while the inhabitants were draining the peat bogs, causing the land to sink. So it became increasingly vulnerable to flooding. By the 10th century, they had to raise and build dikes and sluices to manage the water and protect themselves from flooding. This led to more draining and more sinking. In some places, shallow lakes formed where the land sunk too far and couldn't be drained fast enough. We'll come back to these lakes in a moment. The endless battle against the sea and the wetlands shaped how towns and cities in Holland developed. They built dams, sluices, dikes and canals to keep the sea at bay and discharged the excess water from the agricultural land into the sea or into the canals to stop it pooling and becoming stagnant. The canals also allowed small ships to transport goods up and downstream. All this construction of dams, dikes and canals was expensive though. Some projects in the 12th and 13th century were a joint effort between farmers and other landowners such as monasteries. New technologies were also beginning to appear on the scene, such as new and improved designs for windmills. But what do all these building projects have to do with Edam cheese? Well, one of the key reasons for the drainage projects was to create more farmland for the dairy farming that was starting to drive the economy of Holland. By the 16th century, Holland had grown in prosperity thanks to its ability to ship goods by sea and trade with the Hanseatic League, a powerful confederation of merchant guilds and market towns. Among the goods being shipped was cheese, including Adam cheese, with records going back to 1439, even though the cheese itself is probably much older. As cheese became a bigger part of the economy, it started having more impact on the landscape of Holland, including around the town of Adam. In 1566, a new canal was built, the New Varche, so that farmers could more easily reach the weighing house in Adam. A few decades later, in 1594, the town of Adam contributed 40 guilders towards the bridge over the Sauder Ei and a road to Zunderdorp. This was the town of Adam's small contribution to a bigger construction project to construct a road all the way to Amsterdam so goods could be transported over land as well as by canal. But they weren't just building canals and transport routes. If we look at this 16th century map of Holland, one of the things that immediately stands out is the number of inland lakes cutting through the countryside. Now, if we compare it to this map a century later, in the mid 17th century, several of those lakes are no longer there. What happened to them? 
In the early 17th century, a massive project began by wealthy Amsterdam adventists to drain an inland lake north of Adam called the Beemstermeer. The project started in 1609, with windmills slowly pumping the water from the lake. It wasn't an easy task though, as the following year a massive storm flooded the lake again, so the whole process has to start over in 1612. This time it worked, and new land some 70,000 hectares was turned into farmland. After this success, the councils of Adam and nearby Munikendam also set about draining the Purmermeer, another large inland lake in 1622. Turning the two lakes, the Bamster and the Perma, into land or polders meant more land for dairying and therefore more cheese to pass through the Adam Weyhouse. Competition for control over the polders was pretty intense between the various towns involved, Adam, Munnikendam and Amsterdam, as each wanted to gain the most income by controlling the most land and also handling the product produced on that land. As the 17th century progressed, more lakes were drained, including the Vorma in 1626, the Heer Hoogevaard in 1630, and the Scherma in 1635. The countryside around Adam transformed from one filled with inland lakes to a dairy heartland crisscrossed by dikes and canals and dotted with windmills pumping the water away. So if the desire for more land, to raise more cows, to make more cheese, including Adam cheese, changed the shape of the land in Holland, did the change to the landscape in turn have an impact on Adam cheese? This is actually quite a tricky question to answer, because most of the time when Adam cheese is mentioned in the historical record, it's merely named rather than described. But it's possible to see some of the impacts that can be traced back to the increase in land available for dairy farming. At the most basic level, more land for farming meant more cheese could be produced, and cheese was one of the commodities traded by Holland into the nearby countries, and later by the Dutch Republic throughout its global empire. This in turn meant Adam became an internationally recognized cheese, and demand for it grew. As more land was becoming available for dairy farming, it was possible for Adam cheesemakers to keep up with the increasing demand for their cheese. This demand meant that when factory cheese production was developed, Adam was an obvious choice for Dutch cheesemakers. Technological developments throughout the 19th century, particularly in England and America, made producing cheese in specially built factories on a larger scale possible. The first cheese factory in North Holland was opened in 1872, initially making cheeses for England before switching to Adam cheese. By 1911, the number had grown to 135 factories. The shift from making cheese on the farm to making it in a factory had a major impact on Adam. Traditionally, Adam was made twice a day because the cows were milked twice a day, and the cheese was pretty much made straight away from fresh full fat milk. Only in colder weather, when the cows weren't producing much milk, was the evening milk left overnight and mixed with the next morning's milk. In this case, some of the cream was often skimmed off the evening milk and made into butter. Increasingly, factories also skimmed the cream off milk and made it into butter, but not just in the cold months, they would do this all year round. And then they would take the leftover skimmed milk and make Edam cheese. But this change wasn't that popular, as most people preferred the flavour of full fat Edam, so the cheese's reputation began to suffer in the late 19th century. This wasn't helped by some of the factories shortchanging their customers by selling skimmed milk cheese as full fat. Eventually, in the early 20th century, measures were taken to ensure that cheese was properly labelled with its fat content. Factories often shifted where Edam was made, too. Refrigeration was invented in the late 19th century, and from 1927, road infrastructure was vastly improved throughout the Netherlands, so milk could be transported to factories further away from the farm. Throughout the transition from farm-based to factory-based cheesemaking, Adam remained really popular, so popular that other countries started making it. So Nord Holland had international competition, especially after World War II. It was also when other countries started making Adam in factories that Adam started to lose its distinctive round shape, because it's easier and more efficient to make in either square blocks or wheels. And for the most part, the blocks have won out. Even though it's hard to say how the changes to the landscape around the town of Adam impacted the cheese in the early years, once it was popular, the increased land available for dairy farming meant that more Adam cheese could be made, which in turn meant that it was an obvious choice for factory production once that became a thing, which did impact the cheese that we know as Adam today. The impacts that increased dairy farming had on the Dutch landscape was much more significant, driving land reclamation to meet demand for more dairy farms and for more cheese production. So Adam cheese has impacted Holland's landscape for several centuries at least. If you're interested in knowing more about the history of Adam, watch this video on why Adam is round. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching Cheese Historians, and I'll see you next time for more cheese history.